In the 1950s, Walt Disney was on a roll with the success of his new theme park Disneyland, his live action and animated movies, and his new TV division headed up by producer Bill Walsh. With the massive success of Disney's Davy Crockett TV miniseries in 1955, there was a growing appetite for stories about the Old West and the legendary folk heroes in particular. Fess Parker was growing in fame from his portrayal of Davy Crockett in the Disney miniseries, and Disney was intent on capitalizing on his rising fame by placing him in other similar productions set in the same time period. The Disney movie, The Great Locomotive Chase, released in 1956, starred Fess Parker as James J. Andrews, a real-life leader of a group of Union soldiers. They travel behind Confederate lines dressed in civilian clothes to steal a train and take it back to Tennessee, destroying tracks, bridges, and telegraph lines along the way. Although the film received mixed reviews and wasn't as successful as Disney had hoped, Fess Parker was cementing his fame as a historical figure. Disney then gave Parker starring roles in other films like Old Yeller and Westward Ho the Wagons, but Parker complained that he became a one-note character and that Disney refused to let him play any other type of roles. When Disney gave Parker a bit part in the movie Tonka, he refused the role and Disney suspended him. Parker was wearing out his welcome at Disney and he decided to leave the company. From 1958 to 1962, Parker worked for Paramount Pictures. He appeared in a handful of films, including a cameo as an unnamed frontiersman in Bob Hope's Western comedy, alias Jesse James, and supporting roles in several other Paramount films. As Parker's career was beginning to fade, he proposed an idea to revisit the earlier success of the Davy Crockett series. But when Walt Disney caught wind of the project, Walt threatened to sue him. In response, Parker changed the character from Davy Crockett to Daniel Boone to avoid any lawsuits. Daniel Boone was made by 20th Century Fox Television, Arcola Enterprises, and Fest Parker's own Fest Park Corporation. Many people confused the two television series, as Daniel Boone was just a carbon copy of Disney's Davy Crockett. Parker's Boone wore a coonskin cap like Davy Crockett, and toted a rifle, and even talked like Crockett. Fess Parker was a natural in the role, as people already knew him as Davy Crockett, but there was some controversy over whether or not he looked right as Daniel Boone. In reality, Boone wore a beaver felt slouch hat and stood less than six feet tall. In contrast, Parker was a towering six foot five inches tall. The real Boone also never wore a coonskin cap because he thought they were unfashionable and uncomfortable. Parker's Boone was also less of an explorer and more of a family man than Parker's Crockett. Parker's Crockett wore a light beard most of the time, whereas his Boone was mostly clean shaven. Essentially, Fess Parker was just reprising his role as Davy Crockett with little embellishments here and there. Daniel Boone's wife, Rebecca, son, Israel, and daughter, Jemima, were featured in stories, but Boone had 10 children in real life. His daughter, played by Veronica Cartwright, disappeared with no explanation at the end of the second season and pro football player Rosie Greer appeared for 16 episodes during the show's final season. The real Daniel Boone led a truly remarkable life, living to the ripe old age of 85. He was a man full of energy and achievement and was one of the first Kentucky settlers to cross the Cumberland Gap and cut the wilderness road for others to follow. He fought Indians when he had no choice, but when the Shawnee tribe kidnapped him, he became so beloved that the chief adopted him as a family member. Boone was then allowed to hunt and may have even married a Shawnee woman, but the Indians always kept a close eye on him. He finally managed to escape and warn the residents of Boonesboro that the Indians were planning to attack. They were angry because the settlers had taken over their Kentucky hunting grounds. When the natives finally attacked, the settlers were able to hold them off due to Boone's warning. The Daniel Boone TV show debuted on September 24, 1964, and was an instant ratings hit for NBC. It continued near the top of the ratings in its time slot for six full years. For the first four seasons of the show, Ed Ames co-starred as Mingo, Boone's Cherokee friend. As popular as the show was, it rarely followed historical accuracy and would outrage local historical experts. 
but Parker wasn't interested in historical accuracy. He just wanted to make a good, entertaining family TV show. And he did just that. The show's first season was broadcast in black and white, but by the second season's debut in the fall of 1965, it was shown in living color, with location shooting in California and Utah. The television series showed how dangerous it was to be on the American frontier in the late 18th century. Many of the animals Boone encountered could easily be deadly to a man who wasn't prepared for them. Parker played Boone as a compassionate man with respect for women, helping folks in need, and defending Indians from mobs of men setting out to kill them. All this was at a time when the Civil Rights Movement was in full swing in the 1960s. In the late 60s, Parker became intrigued by the idea of establishing a Davy Crockett-themed amusement park. He purchased land in northern Kentucky to develop frontier land, which would feature thrill rides, musicals, and key periods of American history. When construction began on the King's Island Amusement Park in nearby Mason, Ohio, less than a two-hour drive from Parker's site, financing for Parker's venture dried up. Parker's prospective financiers were busily investing in what would become Walt Disney's new themed amusement park, Disney World in Florida. Walt finally reigned supreme in the Davy vs. Daniel showdown. Even though Daniel Boone lasted six years and 165 episodes, Disney and Davy Crockett had become the more significant pop culture phenomenon. Fess Parker was a pioneer in his own right, of course, he had spent decades entertaining audiences with his portrayals of American folk heroes, and he died of natural causes at the age of 85, the same age as Daniel Boone himself. We'll forever miss Fess Parker for all that he did to bring history to life on screen. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and tune in for more classic TV, movie, and pop culture reviews and retrospectives on Rerun Zone. Goodbye for now. Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, a big man, and he fought for America to make all Americans free.